Imagine you're having a great day. You're feeling confident, happy, and productive. You're working on a project that you're passionate about, enjoying a nice lunch with your friends, and looking forward to a relaxing evening at home. Everything is going well until someone disrespects you. It could be a rude comment from a stranger, a snarky remark from a colleague, a hurtful joke from a friend, or a harsh criticism from a family member. Whatever it is, it makes you feel angry, hurt, or insecure. It ruins your mood, your day, or even your life. How can we deal with disrespect in a way that is healthy, rational, and dignified? How can we avoid letting it ruin our mood, our day, or our life? The Stoics, who lived more than 2,000 years ago, faced a lot of disrespect in their own times. They lived in a world where slavery, oppression, violence, and injustice were common. They also faced criticism, mockery, and hostility from their enemies, rivals, and even their own friends. Yet they did not let disrespect get to them. They had a set of principles and practices that helped them cope with disrespect and maintain their inner peace, happiness, and virtue. In this video, I will share with you 10 Stoic lessons that can help you handle disrespect in this modern world. These lessons are based on the writings and teachings of some of the most famous Stoic philosophers, such as Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, Seneca, and others. By applying these lessons, you will be able to respond to disrespect with calmness, wisdom, and strength. You will also be able to improve yourself, your relationships, and your life. But before we get into the video, I have a small favor to ask you. If you enjoy my content and find it valuable, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It would mean the world to me and help me reach more people who need this kind of advice. It would also motivate me to keep making more videos like this for you. So please take a moment and hit that subscribe button and that like button. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your support. Now let's get into the video. Lesson 1. Don't take it personally. The first lesson is to not take disrespect personally. This means that you don't let it affect your sense of self-worth, your identity, or your happiness. You don't let it make you feel inferior, ashamed, or guilty. Why? Because disrespect is not about you. It's about the other person. It's a reflection of their ignorance, insecurity, prejudice, envy, fear, or pain. It's a projection of their own flaws, problems, or issues. It has nothing to do with you, your character, your values, or your actions. As Marcus Aurelius said, it never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. Don't let other people's opinions define you, dictate your happiness, or control your emotions. You are not what they say you are. You are what you think you are, what you do, what you choose to be. So the next time someone disrespects you, don't take it personally. Don't let it get to you, bother you, or affect you. Just ignore it, shrug it off, or laugh it off. Remember that it's not about you, it's about them. Lesson two, consider the source. The second lesson is to consider the source of the disrespect. This means that you don't take disrespect at face value, accept it as true, valid, or justified. You don't let it influence your self-image, self-esteem, or self-respect. Why? Because disrespect is often based on false, biased, or incomplete information. It's often based on assumptions, stereotypes, or rumors. It's often based on ignorance, misunderstanding, or misinterpretation. It's often based on envy, jealousy, or malice. It's often based on irrationality, emotionality, or impulsivity. As Epictetus said, when someone criticizes you, don't be upset. Examine the criticism. If it's true, correct yourself. If it's not, ignore it. Don't let disrespect blind you, deceive you, mislead you, or fool you. You know yourself better than anyone else. Your strengths, weaknesses, virtues, vices, goals, dreams, passions, purposes, facts, reasons, evidence, logic. So the next time someone disrespects you, consider the source. Don't take it at face value, accept it as true, or let it influence you. Just examine it, question it, challenge it, or reject it. 
Remember that it's often based on falsehood, bias, or incompleteness. Lesson 3. Choose your battles. The third lesson is to choose your battles. This means that you don't react to every disrespect, engage with every disrespectful remark, or fight with every disrespectful person. Why? Because disrespect is not worth your time, energy, attention, or peace of mind. It's not worth your stress, frustration, anger, or resentment. It's not worth your dignity, integrity, honor, or virtue. As Seneca said, the best revenge is not to be like your enemy. Don't let disrespect drag you down, lower your standards, compromise your values, or tarnish your character. You are better than that. Above that, with more important, meaningful, and noble things to do, pursue, and achieve. So the next time someone disrespects you, choose your battles. Don't react, engage, argue, or fight. Just ignore them, avoid them, or walk away from them. Remember that disrespect is not worth your time, energy, attention, or peace of mind. Lesson 4. Respond with reason. The fourth lesson is to respond with reason. This means that you don't let disrespect affect your judgment, logic, rationality, or wisdom. You don't let it cloud your mind, thoughts, opinions, or decisions. You don't let it distort your perception, understanding, knowledge, or truth. Why? Because disrespect is often irrational, illogical, unreasonable, or unwise. It's often based on fallacies, errors, mistakes, or flaws. It's often based on emotions, impulses, instincts, or habits. It's often based on bias, prejudices, preferences, or tastes. As Marcus Aurelius said, the best way to avenge yourself is to not be like that. Don't let disrespect make you irrational, illogical, unreasonable, or unwise. Don't let it make you fallacious, erroneous, mistaken, or flawed. Don't let it make you emotional, impulsive, instinctive, or habitual. Don't let it make you biased, prejudiced, preferential, or tasteless. So the next time someone disrespects you, respond with reason. Don't let it affect your judgment, logic, rationality, or wisdom. Just use your reason, evidence, arguments, or facts. Remember that disrespect is often irrational, illogical, unreasonable, or unwise. Lesson 5. Learn from it. The fifth lesson is to learn from disrespect. Don't let disrespect go to waste. Instead, see it as a challenge, a test, or a trial. It can be a feedback, a lesson, or a growth opportunity. Use it to improve yourself, your skills, your knowledge, or your character. As Epictetus said, difficulties are things that show a person what they are. Don't let disrespect be a negative, useless, or harmful experience. Make something good, valuable, or meaningful out of it. So the next time someone disrespects you, learn from it. Don't let it go to waste. Use it as a challenge, a test, or a trial. Remember that disrespect can be a positive, useful, or beneficial experience. Lesson 6. Forgive and Forget the sixth lesson is to forgive and forget. Don't hold a grudge, seek revenge, or harbor resentment against the person who disrespected you. Don't let disrespect poison, consume, destroy, or stop you. As Seneca said, the greatest remedy for anger is delay. Don't let disrespect make you cynical, pessimistic, hopeless, or helpless. Instead, forgive and forget. Let it go, move on, and focus on the present. Remember that forgiveness is good for your mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual health. Lesson 7. Respect Yourself The seventh lesson is to respect yourself. Don't let disrespect damage your self-respect, self-confidence, self-esteem, or self-love. Don't let it make you doubt, hate, or unhappy with yourself. As Marcus Aurelius said, The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Respect yourself love yourself, trust yourself, believe in yourself, and value yourself. Remember that self-respect is the foundation of everything. Lesson 8. Respect Others The eighth lesson is to respect others. Don't let disrespect make you disrespectful towards others. Instead, be kind, compassionate, gentle, and generous. Respect is the key to your happiness, success, fulfillment, and purpose. As Epictetus said, we are not born for ourselves alone, but for our fellow men as well. 
respect others and treat them with kindness, understanding, and humility. Lesson 9. Set Boundaries The ninth lesson is to set boundaries. Don't let disrespect violate your boundaries, rights, needs, or preferences. Assert yourself, stand up for yourself, speak up for yourself, and protect yourself. Boundaries are essential for your happiness, success, fulfillment, and purpose. As Seneca said, it is not that we have so little time, but that we lose so much of it. Set boundaries and prioritize what's important to you. Lesson 10. Be the change. The tenth and final lesson is to be the change. Don't let disrespect make you cynical, pessimistic, or hopeless. Instead, be proactive, optimistic, and hopeful. Don't be a victim, bystander, follower, or conformist. Be the change you want to see in the world. As Marcus Aurelius said, Waste no more time arguing what a good man should be. Be one. Be the change, inspire others, and make a positive difference in the world. In conclusion, handling disrespect requires patience, resilience, and wisdom. By following these stoic lessons, you can respond to disrespect with calmness, wisdom, and strength. Remember to not take it personally. Consider the source. Choose your battles. Respond with reason. Learn from it. Forgive and forget. Respect yourself and others. Set boundaries and be the change. Thank you for watching, and I hope these lessons help you navigate through disrespectful situations with grace and dignity.